So uh, let's explore the relationship between Islam and science and do it in two, two categories. First is uh, modern cosmology, uh, which gives um, stories for the beginning of the universe, potentially multiverse, how it came into existence. Second is evolution. So let's start with uh, cosmology. I think the connection between modern cosmology and um, 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 Islamic belief can be uh, seen from the perspective of um, uh, uh, Kalam cosmological argument. Perhaps this would be um, a good way to put um, uh, everything because according to the Kalam cosmological argument, which is um, basically inspired by um, uh, some of uh, medieval Muslim philosophers and most importantly, uh, Al-Ghazali, um, um, everything which uh, begins to exist uh, has a cause. And on the other hand, the universe um, um, has a beginning, has a temporal beginning. And this is something that the defenders of the uh, Kalam, cosmological, um, Kalam cosmological argument says that um, this is something that is actually confirmed um, uh, by modern cosmology. And so we can use modern cosmology to defend um, this premise of the Kalam cosmological argument. Yeah. And again, that's one interpretation, but there are interpretations that although this Big Bang that is in the universe that we have is just a pocket universe in uh, perhaps an infinite sea of universes that have uh, grown by some forms of cosmic inflation or other, other mechanisms of a multiverse and some have uh, uh, cycles of, um, of uh, uh, universes that expand and contract or, or interact with one another and that restarts the universe. So you, you can have a, an infinite regress and therefore... I agree and that is why I think that the Kalam cosmological argument is not a good argument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but, but you're in a minority on that in the Islamic tradition. I yes, I think I think you know this is the argument defended by many. Uh, I mean, Muslim philosophers, but I think uh, we don't many Muslim theologians. But um, um, I think um, um, we don't have. Um, I mean, a strong um, arguments in favor of uh, the fact that the universe has has a beginning. Um, um, I don't want to say that um, you know we have a strong argument that the universe. Um, has no beginning, but um, um, I mean, I can say that the arguments presented in favor of um, the temporal beginning of the universe, um, they are not really good arguments. Yeah, and, and, and of course, in the Eastern traditions, it's yeah. exactly the opposite, is that uh, they have a, a, an infinite uh, cycling of, of uh, various things, and not the, the person through the soul reincarnation, but even the, the universe has, uh, is all cyclical in some way, and it always existed. So that's a fundamental difference between the Abrahamic traditions, but you're saying that, that the uh, Kalam cosmological argument, which has uh, been used both in, in Islam, where it originated, and in, in Christian philosophy, uh, is, um, is, is, not, uh, is not airtight. <laughs> yeah, and, and there are Muslim philosophers who actually uh, believe the same thing. Uh, they propose arguments which um, 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 don't depend uh, on whether or not the universe has a temporal yes. beginning. Yes, and yeah, they are because if God is the sustainer of all, exactly. then, uh, it, whether, the, then, then God could have sustained the infinite universe is one of the, one of the principles. Some, some Christian uh, 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 philosophers and scientists uh, have that same, the same view that uh, the, the beginning of the universe is, is not necessary to prove that there is a God. True. And, and that's, that's your view. Um, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, I, I like um, an argument which is originally proposed by um, Avicenna for the existence of God. And um, um, in um, that argument, God is the necessary existent which is the ultimate um, uh, ground for the existence of everything else, yeah. regardless of whether or not um, uh, we have um, a, a temporal beginning for yeah. uh, everything. Okay. That's very clear. Uh, let's go on to evolution, uh, which at least contemporarily is, is very controversial within Islam. Yeah. Uh, and obviously in some parts of, uh, of uh, Christian world, uh, obviously that, that has become a political issue, which is n not of interest to, to me here, uh, looking at the, at the philosophical uh, traditions. Uh, I mean, I think um, 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 there is no 
um, this is my uh, personal opinion. I don't know if other, uh, um, I mean, um, uh, scholars agree with me or not. But um, I believe that there is no incompatibility uh, between evolution and um, Islam. And it depends on uh, how we understand, um, I mean, evolution and how we understand the Islamic um, Quranic uh, narration of, um, 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 I mean, creation. Um, 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 I think um, um, there are um, uh, interpretations of evolution which are perfectly compatible with the uh, picture that we have in the in the Quran, and. Um, um, and, and I think um, um, this is not um, very different from those uh, pictures in the, for example, Christian tradition, which are... Yeah, but, but, but your position is a minority position within Islam. I think um, many, many people would say yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> that um, I'm in minority. But on the other hand, there are some, um, I mean... Um, growing interest um, in arguments in favor of the compatibility between uh, the two things.